In this video, I'm going to build a sofa table. I started with birch boards measuring roughly six and a half inches wide and trimmed them to rough length with my jigsaw. I milled the boards to one inch thick for the top of the table and the legs. Because my jointer has a small bed, I like to use a track saw to joint long edges for a tabletop glue up. Three of these pieces will make the long boards for the tabletop, and the fourth piece will be cut to make breadboard ends. I trim the width of the boards at the table saw. The center board is 6 inches wide and the two side boards are 5 inches wide. To align the boards, I used 5 dowels down the entire length of the boards. and I test the fit and placement of the dowels. I clamped the boards to get them to fit together, then used my panel clamping jig to apply even pressure throughout the glue up. Once the top was dry, I cleaned up the squeeze out and went to work scraping the top. I cut the length of the tabletop with the track saw.
I then laid out the tenons that will accept the breadboard ends. I used the track saw to establish the shoulder of the tenon and I plunged just a quarter inch deep. Using a fence clamped to the tabletop, I cleaned up the remaining material with a router and a spiral downcut bit. I cut the breadboard ends to length and I added a dado to accept the tenons of the tabletop. I use this router plane to clean up any inconsistencies created by the router. I was using the tabletop as a reference and it was not completely flat. At the drill press, I drilled three 3 8 inch holes to each of the breadboard ends. And I used the same brad point bit to center punch the tenon. It's important to elongate the two holes near the edges of the tabletop. This allows for wood movement. I added the dowels and then flush cut them. I sanded the tabletop to 150 grit. This is slightly higher than what's recommended by the finish manufacturer. In this project, I'm using Rubio Monocoat. And I finished the breadboard ends with a jack plane. Now for the pieces that make the base, I first gave each piece a slight chamfer using a low angled plane. Then I used the dowel max to create two dowel holes in each end of the apron pieces. I then fit a spacer into the dowel max to create a 1 16th inch reveal.
and I marked the position of the bottom aprons on the legs. I was careful to orient the faces of the legs because the legs cannot be interchanged with each other, otherwise the reveal would be facing inwards on some of these boards. And I added the corresponding dowel holes to the legs. And I tested the fit. This is what the reveal looks like. And I proceeded adding the dowel holes to the legs to accept the lower aprons. And I also tested the fit. and I added the dowel holes to accept the adjacent aprons. Here I'm beginning to assemble the front face of the base of the table. I used my assembly table to do this and assure everything was in square. After clamping, I was able to manipulate the frame and repeat the process for the back facing frame. And once dried, I cleaned up any glue and marks left from assembly. I then needed to connect the two frames together. At first, I tried using some 90 degree clamps, but found these to be cumbersome and unnecessary. Adding clamps across the aprons was plenty to keep everything square. I didn't end up using that pile of 90 degree clamps. I then cleaned up the excess squeeze out with a straw. I find this method to be very satisfying.
I was now going to be taking the base off of the table to work on the top. So I clamped a batten across the frame to prevent it from flexing while lifting and moving it around. And onto the top, I added a deeper chamfer. I needed to drill holes for the screws that will attach the tabletop to the base. I used a Forstner bit to bore the screw into the apron. And once that depth was found, I marked the depth with some masking tape. By marking the depth, I was able to keep the depth consistent. and I drilled through the rest of the apron with an oversized brad point bit. Keeping the hole oversized allows the top to move with the seasons. I then milled boards for the lower shelf I cleaned up one end of these shelf boards and then trimmed them to length. I need to make brackets for the lower shelf to sit on and these would be attached to the lower aprons. I made two of these brackets and also one longer support for the center that I will trim later to size. For the center support I wanted it to span across these two aprons in the center. So instead of measuring, I decided to just mark the length of this support and cut it to fit perfectly. I 
I added pocket holes to the center support so it could be attached to the lower aprons. I prefer these smaller head pocket screws, especially when using them in this kind of application where load bearing is not a concern. I then added counterboard holes to the shelf brackets. and drilled all the way through with an oversized brad point bit. I then glued and screwed them to the lower aprons. When screwing in the pocket hole screws, I noticed the center support had shifted slightly, so I removed some material to allow the boards to sit completely flat. For the finish, I used Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus 2C in the color Pure. And first used a tack rag to remove any dust, then applied the Rubio with a foam brush. By the time I got to the top, I was frustrated with a soggy foam brush, so I just started pouring the stuff on. I 
And here I actually cracked that soggy foam brush. My father came over while a piece was drying and he brought up a good point. He said the two aprons at the top would flex over time and either move further apart from each other or even sag away from the tabletop. So to combat this, I added a support piece to the top apron in the same way I did the bottom aprons. This time, instead of supporting the shelf on the bottom, it's supporting the top. Then after a second coat of Rubio, I attach the top to the base. And here's how it came out. I loved putting this piece together. And if you're interested in building a sofa table like this one, you can find a link to the plans for purchase in the description. If you enjoyed watching the process, please like this video. I hope to make more content like this in the future, so please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. Thank you.